All right, we're here in sunny Mesa, Arizona with Brian at Heat Seek Labs, and Brian's going to give us a quick tour or introduce us in here. Brian, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, and welcome to Heat Seek Labs. So, we're good to go in now. All right. I want to start by introducing you to Mohib. He's currently sitting over at the 3D printer station, so if you follow me. All right. Let's go. Uh, I'm Mohib Zion, so what we got here is our 3D printing station. It all started with a rep wrap and a faker bot, which is a lab sourced cupcake CNC that uh, we have over there. Right now I'm just printing a Hackaday logo out of Emerald Green PLA. Nice thing here is I can bump the speed up however much I want. Just the other night I did a custom top for Hackaday's arrival. It's a skull joystick top. Just fits right there. Well, we got a bunch of examples here. Everybody comes in. We have uh, like every Wednesday we do a 3D printing night. People come in, bring them their models, and they'll just print. Um, we even got some examples of cost per plastic. It's a five dollar print as opposed to a two dollar fifty cents print, and it's just difference of resolution. Very nice. Would you mind telling us real quick about this joystick project you were showing me? Yeah, uh, the idea was I wanted to. It started with the idea of making the joystick topper, and then uh, on the laser that we'll see in a minute, uh, I did this whole box from scratch. And the idea is uh, a Raspberry Pi will go in here, the SD card slot here, video audio, and it'll be running MAME, so that's the multi arcade emulator. And you'll be able to plug in multiple joysticks to this, and this will be kind of like a standalone Raspberry Pi powered arcade machine. Very cool. All right, thank you. Yeah, it looks like we managed to. Oh, yeah, we got the, the Hackaday logo finished. Later. All right. <laughs> later. That could be a pain. I'll show you the uh, right. other 3D printers we have. So uh, a while back, a guy named Corey put together this, which is essentially a uh, do-it-yourself cupcake CNC mm -hmm. um, knockoff. Um, it's all custom. You got the platform comes off. I'll modify them. And then this was the rep rep. I think this was the first 3D printer that we did. Um, it's out of commission for now, and we have somebody coming in to gut that to make something nicer for us. Ideally, something like a Mendel 90. Very nice. All right. And moving on. All right, we have a variety of different types of facilities here. Uh, up front, very often, there's uh, some Arduino nights where people come in and they work on different Arduino projects. In addition, we've got uh, an electronics area over here on this side where people come in and do their electronics projects. We've got a variety of different equipment, scopes, uh, you know, uh, rework stations, things like that, including a little bit of a reflow oven over there in the corner. And then we move over to this area, which is primarily where we do laser type work. And I'm going to introduce you to Nate. And uh, uh, Nate is pretty much the, uh, the the champion of this particular area. He gives all the training uh, for um, use of the laser and is primarily responsible. You want to talk about what you do, Nate? Um, we have a 100 watt XLS laser that we recently downgraded to 85 watts. Most of our projects were uh, in the 40 or 50, 60 range, so it wasn't a problem for us. The majority of the materials that we use here is either acrylic plastic or uh, thin plywoods. And we've also done a variety of things in like plastic, cardboard. You might not see this very well on camera, but. Uh, oh, yeah, you can see it. Yeah. So that's the Hackaday logo engraved backwards on a mirror, and it turns out normally we would back paint that with light paint, but it turns out that the light shining through made it too, so nice we left it that way. I think Brian was mentioning his casting. Uh, Brian, what was this called? Lost? Lost foam casting in straight sand. So they used the laser to create the mold out of the foam, and then Brian did the... Uh, oh yeah made this out of uh, foam and then we took that and we just put it in standard play sand. Um, I built my own foundry furnace so I'll go through and I melt down scrap and then I basically poured the molten metal in on top of this piece. It vaporizes as it goes along and you can actually produce something in aluminum. And as you can see 
Um, this is uh, uh, actually one of my, my failures because the good stuff, you know, you keep it home. But uh, we blatantly were pandering for this visit. Uh, so uh, heat sink on one side and uh, Hackaday on the other. Uh, a little better is a lost foam set I did where I cut this out on uh, the laser and then went through and cast it on. Very nice. Thank you. So I guess you see a variety of artwork we've done. Uh, often I recommend to people to use cardboard to prototype their thing before they commit to plastic or wood that's more expensive. And you see on our wall here, our wall of fame, we've done a pumpkin last uh, Halloween. Um, I think you saw earlier that we'd also done a QR code on a pumpkin that was actually readable in the lobby. I'm quite proud that in this case, uh, this student came in and had a robot hand. He initially was going to, uh, this was featured on Instructables. He was initially going to do the robot hand on the 3D printer, but structurally it wouldn't have held up. But since he had the DXF files available, we quickly put it on the laser cutter and we had the scrap plastic. So when he did this, he came in first on his high school uh, competition and second in the state. What is so, it? How does it work? So this is the Heatsink Lab Scanning Electron Microscope Project. It's a test bed of different DIY electron beam based technologies. Currently there's a cold cathode beam line being prototyped and here is one of the machined um, electron gun elements that uses a cold cathode discharge, creates a cloud of plasma using residual air under medium vacuum conditions and then harvests the electrons out of them, accelerates them down a beam line. Currently there are no electron detectors in the system, that's the next step. Right now I'm using um, a broken CFL bulb. I'm harvesting the powder out of that to create a target. When the electron beam impacts the target, you get a colored dot. And so I'm testing the optics and the focal lengths of all the optics and all of that and the deflection circuitry visually for now. Because yeah. otherwise you can't see an electron beam, so how do you know where the focal point is? You don't know. So currently it's a visual process. Once everything gets characterized, then we switch to electrons and ele electron detection. We have a very active sewing group that creates individual parts. In this case, it was a um, steampunk costume for a, a local steampunk convention that we had down here earlier in the year. But, uh, it's not just all metal and flame. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, if you if you'd like, I'll bring you over here and we can talk about uh, some additional stuff. You willing to uh, give us a little sure. interview here and talk about what you do? What do you want to know? All right. First off, hi. What's hi, your... I'm Mike Seifert. All right. What you got working on? Uh, on you? I'm doing molding and casting. So um, to start out with, we made gears. So. This gear is from the one I didn't bring. Uh, this one here is this gear here. So um, in order to get this thickness, I cut these on the laser uh -huh. and then glued two pieces together to get the thickness for this. And that's what made that. Cool. So the idea of it was to try to, you know, so that I can do this at home. I live uh -huh. way far away. So this is like an hour and a half to get up here. but it turns out that it's probably costing me less in gas than it is in time to make these. Yeah. So, but um, the other thing is that I'm doing a lot of experimenting with uh, you know, molds process. This was actually a bike gear uh, that I cast, so I created that. Um, and then my biggest thing right now is doing the two-part molding process, uh, which is what we're looking at here. Um, that makes this gun, uh, which was sculpted by Ryan Lunt over here. And uh, the process to do this, um, you first have to take the original, uh, lay it into clay inside of a box, and then you pour your silicone mold over one side, and then when it cures and dries, then you pull the clay out and clean the mold up and everything, and then cast the other side. Uh, the way this works is you put it together, you clamp this with some plastic in between it, and then pour a liquid polymer resin inside of it, which is what gives you this. Very cool. That's pretty cool. All right, thank you very much. Sure. And moving on, back here we have a uh, general uh, woodworking and project area where we can do some of the more uh, 
dirty and messy tasks, um, we've got a variety of different tables people work on. And as you can see, there's several projects in, uh, in progress right now, including a little modification to this trunk and, and an awning that's going to be made out of electrical tube and Tyvek. Um, we have some uh, general tools over here, a bandsaw, and a few other things uh, that people might use. And then we have a pretty good machine shop area where we've got you know metal cutting saws and a couple of uh, different mills and a couple of different uh, metal turning lathes. This is a pretty active spot back here. People use this a lot um, because you just can't find that outside of a you know hackerspace type of place. And then finally, we have a welding booth that we've lined with metal for purposes of safety. Uh, we do both um, gas and uh, TIG welding and MIG welding, and um, we give classes on uh, how to use these things and so that you can build projects with that. Now, if you follow me, we'll go upstairs and we'll look at, at BeatSync, which is a kind of a musical hacking area that we have up top. And now we're upstairs in what is affectionately called beat sync, where people do kind of experimental music type of stuff. It's kind of grown organically out of uh, just a project where one of the members put his drums up here. So let's go in and see what's going on. Okay. So uh, as I said, we started out simply with a drum set. And then that is turned into an entire studio, including uh, keyboards, uh, amps, and a big mixing board that was that was just donated to us in this area. Very nice. So, thanks. Very nice. And I see we've got a good view of the space out there. Right. Yeah. We also do ham radio stuff in this uh, in this area. We've got a ham radio set over there. We've got antennas on the roof. Great. Well. Thank you very much for the tour of Heat Sink in Mesa, Arizona. You're very welcome.